You seem to know your way around the Mandelbrot set pretty well. Well, there's a lot here to explore, but by understanding just a few very simple organizational principles, you can become familiar with the whole thing, because these principles are universal. So even though everywhere you go in the Mandelbrot set, the style is very different, you've seen lots of different images, nonetheless, the rules that govern the behavior of these structures are identical everywhere. Now, for example, as you zoom down, I'll illustrate a couple of these principles. As you zoom down mm -hmm. the Seahorse Valley, the deeper you zoom down that valley, the more tightly twisted these spirals become. And that's universal. Every time you go down a crevice somewhere in the Mandelbrot set, the spirals become more and more tightly wrapped. It's beautiful and kind of eerie. Absolutely. Another principle that you can see and then you can learn to navigate with is bifurcation. And you can see as you zoom down, what starts as a twofold symmetric structure splits, becomes fourfold symmetric, and then eightfold symmetric. Inside that, sixteenfold. Now we see thirty-two fold symmetry. And in, in the end, it keeps going in powers of two until you come to a replica of the Mandelbrot set itself, an example of self-similarity. Now, there are lots and lots of these little replicas of the Mandelbrot set all over. In fact, one of the dazzling and unbelievable facts about this is that the entire Mandelbrot set is made up of nothing but copies of itself. Infinitely tiny, some of them, but nothing but copies of itself. Mike, is there a way that you can summarize all this complexity for us? Yeah, or at least some of it you can ca is captured by this image. Uh, a friend of mine calls this the face of God. What we do here is we have divided the surface into little tiny squares, little bins. And every time an iteration falls inside a bin, we put a one in it. So we add like a pebble, if you can imagine adding a pebble to that bin. Uh, when it's all done, we just have an image of how many pebbles are in each bin. And amazingly, this image shows these, these teardrop structures, which aren't visible in the Mandelbrot set. They show uh, shading and, and texture and things that you wouldn't have expected to see. And they show this whole exploding out from the center quality. So this gives you a little feel for how these trajectories are looping around and you know, zipping around and causing these, the complexity out of this, this complex set of trajectories, which, which sort of averages out to this beautiful, smooth shape. Jonathan, you've applied your love of chaos and fractals to these large-scale textile artworks that you produce. Can you tell us a little more about that? Certainly. I love to fly, and I love to build hot air balloons. So I've dyed the fabric for a couple of balloons so far that has been inspired by fractal mathematics. The patterns on the envelope of the balloon are made of connected spirals, just like what we see in the Julia Self sets. Self-similar? Absolutely. Now, as a pilot, what I'm doing is launching myself into a chaotic system. The atmosphere was the very first discovered chaotic system, and it's inherently unpredictable. Now, why would I do something as silly as that? People always ask, how do you steer? Well, I steer by understanding the atmospheric dynamics. The more that I know about what the wind currents are doing and how they interact, the better able I am to fly the balloon exactly where I want it to go. Amazing. You're using the same skills that you use to navigate the Mandelbrot set to literally navigate the edge of chaos in the atmosphere. It's beautiful. It's what I live for. That's tremendous. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you.